I'm Nancy. And I'm Stephanie. And if you like our channel, please like and subscribe. Got that out of the way. I hate doing those. <laughs> so this video is going to be about the interviews that Harry has conducted in the last week. He did four. He did straight, oh, he did four? He did um, Bradby, Anderson Cooper, Cooper. Michael Strahan, which really doesn't count because it was Michael Strahan. Colbert. And Colbert. Oh, that was it. Okay, that was it. so four. So four. It felt like a lot for It some felt reason. like an eternity. An of... eternity. We watched them so you wouldn't have to. Well. So you're welcome. We started out with Tom Bradby, and if no one knows, he's the guy that did their little documentary special when they were in South Africa. So he was the one that started the whole Megan, are you okay thing, which was it sparked a ton of memes and it was That's really when funny. I still liked her though. You did still like I her. I did. I then. still liked her. I we was like, oh man, I go, she, God, she's really showing like this vulnerable side to her and she's relatable because she's going through hormones and, and she's, you know, she's in her forties. And I mean, I really liked her back then. Yeah. She had lost me back then. Yeah. There, I just didn't trust her at that point. But you know, we, we weren't, just cause we're twins doesn't mean we don't have different opinions. I think the most explosive thing that he said was, and we covered it in the last video, was that he never implied and neither did Megan on Oprah that the royal family was, is racist. I think that was the most explosive thing well, to come I out of. Well, what I loved about Tom Bradby is that he like stepped to him a little bit. It was like this, right. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was stepping to him a little yeah. bit. Anderson Cooper uh, did not do what Tom Bradby yeah. did. And I was rooting for Anderson Cooper. I, I was really too. Thought, I love Anderson Cooper. I really thought that he, you know, he's best friends with Andy Cohen. Yeah. I thought he was going to give it to him. What and happened to Anderson Cooper? I mean, I know money is playing a huge factor in this, but oh my <sighs> God. That interview was so boring and so pointless. Well, it, okay, so it first starts off with Anderson reading an excerpt from the book and he mentions the balding comment yeah. about William. And Harry does this like smirk, smirk. He's like, that is so mean. I just went, And petty. The, half of this, even one of the things Harry says about William, if she said that to me, I would be in the fetal position crying on the floor right now. I think you would be like, dude, slow your roll. <laughs> I would, but I'd be upset about it. I mean, the things he's saying about his brother is insane. Yeah, so he starts off with that little smirk and I was like, oh wow, this is gonna he's be, like, this is gonna be the petty, uh, party petty hour. It's gonna be the petty 60 hour. 60 minutes of petty. Wow, so I didn't really like that. And then he kind of just came across like, nothing I wrote in this book was intended to hurt my family. Oh, right. That, then right I- Right then is when Anderson Cooper should have done some pushback. I, I got a question. If it wasn't intended to hurt your family, then why after the queen died, did you go to, what is it, Random House? Was it Random House that did this? Oh Penguin, no, Penguin Random whatever, House. Whatever, Random yeah. House. Why did you go to them and try to edit? We know what you were doing. You never thought the queen was going to die when she did. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it just irritates me. Yeah. He mentions, okay, I just want you to know that William and I had these problems long before Megan. So yeah. I want to squash that rumor that Megan's the reason that, that I don't talk to my family right now and we're having all this rips. It was, it was very weird yeah he that he he had to put that in there yeah. oh i just want you to know that megan had nothing to do with this of course megan he was covering had nothing, his tracks it was all i don't think harry was covering his tracks i think it just sounded like he was told to to just make sure that you they can't they don't blame me for this make sure you tell them that well, he blamed the british media for everything oh, what do you mean well, i mean we know we know yeah we know he's backpedaling and we know what he's doing i mean he doesn't want to get in trouble for I this mean, he actually went as far to tell anderson cooper that he wants to have a relationship with his family <laughs> yeah harry what i noticed in all the interviews is he kept reiterating the fact that i'm happy now yeah I'm happy. Usually I find that people that are unhappy have to constantly go around telling people yeah. how happy they are. That's what I find. I don't have to like go around telling, like I'm pretty happy in my life right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been times where they I've had low points and yeah, I wouldn't tell a lot of people about it. I'd be like, oh, I'm fine. But now I am genuinely happy when it comes to my the relationships in my life. And I don't feel I have to tell everybody that. Well, that's the thing. Every five minutes. 
I didn't like how on Anderson Cooper, he insinuated that his dad wasn't loving yeah. when Diana died. I thought that was really mean because I don't know what the rest of the world was seeing, but when Diana died, it, I was shook. Well, he, he, he told shook. Anderson, he told Anderson that his dad never hugged him. This is my take on this. Why are we all assuming that Prince Charles was not in shock too? We're all yeah. saying, I mean, he didn't know what to do. He, you know, Prince Charles flew to France to pick up Diana's body. Now, I remember this. This was yeah. back in 1997. I watched the coverage religiously. Yeah. And he flew to France with her sisters mm -hmm. to pick up the body. And when he got in his car to um, leave the, uh, the funeral home to the airport to yeah. put her on the plane, he was crying in the car. Yeah, man. It's, I, he was crying. This whole narrative that Harry's saying that Prince Charles was a robot to him. And it, no. During I don't, Diana's I don't death. believe at, that at all. This was a father who was grieving. Now, he might not have necessarily felt overly emotional with Diana. But mm -hmm. the man was overcome with grief for, for his, his sons. Kids. For his sons. And so was the queen and Prince Philip. They, Prince only, Philip cared knows they what, only cared about protecting William those and boys. Harry. So I don't believe any of that. Yeah. I think Anderson Cooper again dropped the ball on that. Dropped he didn't the ball. he didn't ask, you know. He, and you know what? Anderson had so many opportunities to put up pictures of Charles hugging Harry and Charles kissing Harry and Harry being um loving towards Camilla and and it, uh, he had yeah. such an opportunity but well, he blew it. I, another thing I didn't like about well, first of all, he was exploiting Diana again in that again. interview. Oh man, but that bothered why me. did he describe the crash? Nancy, pictures? I put that up on. Tw I was mortified by that. He goes into gruesome detail about his. Mo Nancy, did you? Oh I I couldn't even watch it. I was drinking. I mean, I probably had like five glasses of wine that I night know. because I just couldn't deal with it. I know, but it was just like he wanted us to know that he saw the crime scene photos he wanted us to know oh. the position of her head and we like why they wanted us that? to know wh wh why would you do that to us that is not, not necessarily good. to us why would you do that to your brother i know it, it, it's just it's a lot of information i mean i just can't so believe. And personal then, and then with anderson cooper he does he does the same thing to the queen to anderson asked him about you know uh balmora and why were you not on the jet with william and, and he, he made up like he makes up all these lies you know it had to do with megan of megan course, wanted to get on the plane too and they were course. like no freaking way is that happening Will, william then graciously did the walk about with megan and oh, harry yeah. so i don't believe that for a second harry did not make the jet with everyone else but that's because it was his fault he was throwing a tantrum on the tarmac Act, like a little baby his grandmother was near death we all you know we knew we knew what was going on the reporters were putting on their black clothes and everything and harry comes up with this crazy thing that oh i no. uh anderson says were you invited and harry goes nope he says no i was not and then harry does something i never thought he would do he went into detail about his grandmother and where she was when she died. Her corpse. He talked about her corpse. He, he talked That's about he the did. queen's corpse. Yeah. I just... Our grandma died kind of like that. But at I home. would never tell We're, anyone yeah. what happened. But we have never to this day I'm not, described it. I mean, maybe I've said it to my therapist, but I would never tell the world. Yeah, I mean, this I is mean, crazy. We, the way he went in. Okay, so Princess Diana and, and Queen are apparently Queen are just, just bodies at this point. Yeah, and their wow. memories. Wow. So wow. That was shocking. And Ander shame on Anderson Cooper again, because he could have yeah. shut down some of this stuff. And he talks about how scared <laughs> he is of every single person <laughs> well, on this planet. You know, he's part of, he's part of that group now where everything's trigger. Everything's a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, like, like, and it sucks. Cause we all had his back. He was did. Prince Harry. We loved him. He was adored by everyone. He was one of the most popular, popular royals, royals next to the queen. Exactly. Before, before Megan. Before but he got Megan. Nancy, but, got but I'm saying, even with me, see, you and I differ. I loved Megan. I thought it was great. She was a great addition. But then it all, when, when, you, when you see those dollar signs, there's some people that just cannot resist. They're going to take down their family. Yeah. And that's exactly what Harry Well, that's did. a good point you make. Because I was thinking about that. Because I'm like, how could you, they're showing Hollywood and their Hollywood friends that we're willing to take down anybody exactly. for money. And that is such a no-no. Stephanie and I lived in L.A., 
the Hollywood sort of scene for like 10 years. 13. And we were around people and, and you know, we like Stephanie said in other videos, she had she was very good friends with Will Smith. She would be at his house, his kids' birthday parties. He'd know stories. And and yeah, we I guess they could have been sellable, but it for people with character, you don't even you don't do it. Imagine doing that, no. throwing people under the bus no. like that. No, no. It doesn't even like it's a, it's, cross your mind. No, it's just that Harry and Megan are out for money and they it's crazy. You know, who knows how much sixty minutes gave them for that? But like interview. we have so many pictures. I would never share the pictures I, I have no, with God, anybody. No, no, don't even and, talk about it. That's well, gross. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, like so, like with friends. Yeah, but Anderson, it's crazy. He, he dropped the ball on He that really one. dropped the ball. I mean, and then he talked about his drug use. He did oh, yeah. weed and coke in his 20s. Who, Who didn't? didn't? A lot of people are now ups upset because they think that he's still on drugs. Oh, he's definitely saying, still on drugs. Well, they're saying they're saying because of the interviews and the way the ghostwriter took advantage of him, all that stuff. He so. threw Courtney Cox under the bus. In the Wait, book. what? Yes, you didn't hear about that? No! He was in LA. Monica? He was in LA once and he talked about how he went to her house and she made him mushroom chalk. He she oh, gave him mushroom chocolate. I did hear about the chocolates, but I didn't know it was Courtney Cox. It's God. not legal yet in, is, in California. He mushrooms. really is pushing the boundaries, man. You just man, don't talk you about just that don't stuff. Talk you about don't drug talk about drug use. You don't talk about where you got it. You don't talk about when you did it. You don't I mean, talk about so, who you did it with. It's such a Kardashian thing for him to do. I mean, really Megan, it they really is. It's that sleazy Kris Jenner leaking to TMZ sl slimy stuff. So Another thing I found was weird was he talked about how he had never talked to a therapist until uh, seven years ago mm -hmm. about the, his trauma. Well, he told Oprah he hadn't talk to a therapist until he met Megan. Right. So which that. one is it? But Nancy, the lies that were coming out of that which man's mouth, it? he's a 38 year old man and he was lying the entire time, blaming everybody else for his problems. I mean, yeah, he talked about a fight with Megan is what made him finally go to therapy. A fight with Megan, this is what, this is what Megan did, okay? And therapy's his cult, okay? It's not okay, therapy. Yeah. Harry was right for the pickings to be manipulated by anybody. And the minute she started horning in and, and being in his inner circle, you just have to, it sounds like you just have to get Harry uh, high on weed or drunk a couple nights for him to spill the beats about anything. Yeah. So that's what it sounds like. She took a lot of pictures. Yep. Obviously. Pictures are collateral. Are collateral. In cult. It was, uh, it was a very well-known fact that they, he was trying to end things and when they went to Jamaica yeah. for that wedding mm -hmm. and she showed up anyway. She had a paparazzi take pictures, photos of them. Yep. And he was very upset about that. You can see it on the beach. Yep. Another theory I had back then during Jamaica and everything that was happening, this was right during Me Too. Yep. Yeah. So oh, if they had a fight, yeah, if we they had know. a fight, if they had anything, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the woman back then? Or are gonna, you going to believe yeah. Prince Harry? No, she, she, believe she the woman. We know she manipulated him. This yeah. was such manipulation because... Yeah, Me Too was very popular back then, so. You could have Me Tooed anybody, even Prince Harry. He throws Camilla under the bus. Well, yeah, what was he saying about Camilla? Calls her a villain. Is, it, is this in the interview or the yeah, book? Yeah, the I'm interview, he calls, her, he calls her dangerous and he calls her a villain. Yeah, I didn't really, yeah. I was so um, upset about the Princess Now, Diana a lot thing. of people got upset with me on Twitter for saying this, but Camilla has worked hard. Of course we didn't like Camilla in the beginning. I she hated was, Camilla. Yeah, we all hated Camilla. We were very upset by- I was by really, it. really traumatized by that, okay? Yeah. Because I love Princess Diana that much. But what you have to understand is the job of a consort, what Kate is going to be doing, mm -hmm. and, and, and also Kate will be the queen mother as well. Their job is to put country and their king over right. everything. Mm -hmm. And she is a very dutiful wife. Unfortunately, Diana did not want that job. Diana, Diana did great. not. No, but Diana was great. She with... was great on her own. Well, yes. But she did not want she the job, want that job to be second to Charles. No, no. Camilla does a wonderful job of that. She is a great wife. And well, she does so much for so much good. Well, Queen Camilla and, and people like Princess uh, Anne, they are doing things behind the scenes that we don't even know no. about. You know, it's not like, you know, like, it's not like Megan where she has to air, you know, she goes to a uh, Uvalde. Uvalde. Oh, I, and you know, that'll be in season two or something like that. Yeah. Or in, in the, the unforgiven thing. Yeah. That she's doing. Yeah. Oh God. 
but she does yeah she does something great but i just i you know it's behind the scenes that matter you know that those are the heroes you know they did an episode in curb your enthusiasm remember anonymous yeah. it's true man anonymous gets yeah. a lot further in life than putting your name out there well it really does and she and you know for him to say that she sacrificed harry to the press come on that's again lies well, it is a lie you know why because every single person in the press even people that were pro harry and megan have come out and said we have never gotten one mm -hmm. yeah a thing a lot the a, a lot of people not one a, person a lot of people have been turning on it. there's no proof <laughs> There's really no proof. Yeah. The lies. The lies. And William saw it. When you're so, when you're a brother and when you're so close to your other brother, yeah. William saw Megan for who she was right away. Yep. You, you know. So, you have an instinct. Like you a, have an instinct. He saw that she was staging the pap walks mm -hmm. at Kensington Palace. Right. In front of the, the Daily Mail yeah. um, offices. Mm -hmm. He saw that. He saw that she was taking tons and tons of pictures of at not caught. Right. He saw that she was staging pap walks in Toronto yes. because they were staged pap walks. Yeah. Because she was perfectly, her hair was done. She had but her we, yoga mat. Yeah. That's a, that's a staged pap walk. And guys. not one interview person <laughs> asked Terry about any of that stuff. Conveniently then, enough. Yeah. And then he saw the Vanity Fair cover. Yeah. I'm just wild about Harry. I mean, after what they've only been dating for six seven months she wanted the publicity and the attention that's, that's and really i have forward. to be honest nancy back then i liked it i was on her side back then i mm -hmm. thought it was awesome i was like oh yay i get to read about it yeah. i get to read something on my on my flight you know he accuses william of, of pretty much everything so yeah it's all william's fault and it's all the british media's fault he th you know what's interesting about that too when he keeps blaming the british media how about the the U.S. media right now, they hate him. Oh, no. He, that's why he hates the First Amendment. Remember, they he goes, I can't stand the First him. Amendment. Yeah. Good they all luck, turned Harry. On him. They all turned Good on luck. Him. Stephen Colbert. Colbert. Did you oh, guys, my God. Nancy, you oh might know God. more about oh this than God. me. Oh, my God. I sat and watched it like an idiot. Oh, no, no. But let's talk about the audience first before we yes. get into the, to the interview. Yes. What happened there? Well, the story's changed about 5,000 times. But well, I wonder why. Harry did not tape it live on Tuesday. He went Monday, went into the studio, and right. supposedly taped it in front of the Monday audience. Now, I don't believe this for a second. No, it didn't sound like there was it even... Didn't it sounded sound, like there was crew yeah, and, some and a laugh, laugh track. track. It yeah. sounded like a laugh track. Um, I've worked in TV, and I know the difference between an actual studio audience and a laugh track. Well, and also, he was talking about security concerns. That was like the big deal. So he shows up to the... <laughs> to the show i can't even I, I you know i don't watch Stephen laugh. colbert i don't i think what he did to the ed sullivan theater is so sad because we were huge david letterman fans it makes me so sad that yeah. it's in there um but he showed up with a bodyguard who was carrying a uh glock a glock, glock briefcase glock I, yeah it's the gun i didn't understand like is that usually how they carry it and well i think all, it had it for safety reasons okay but se okay so He's carrying the Glock, but what if somebody shoot pulls out a gun and no, shoots I don't, her? How I, are you going to take the Glock out of the I don't suitcase? Know. In the time? whole thing's crazy. The whole thing didn't make sense. No. So I don't. If anybody was, knows, he, I don't know he, anything he, about was, guns. It was almost like he, he was trying to show <laughs> the Taliban, "Hey guys, we're packing heat here, so stay away." No, like the Taliban's going to. He fought Watt himself, and now he's he's he, got a Glock he in his hand. He did it to himself. He did so, it to himself. So what was interesting about Colbert was Colbert was so sympathetic. Oh yeah, he was so sympathetic. He's oh, like Harry. this book, and then the Tom Hanks thing. Okay, though. well they started it off with a bit about having um, no. They were making Trump fun. They were, they were making, making fun, fun of, of, the, royal of the royal family. They were mocking the royals. They were mocking yeah. the royals. So and Harry What's let them. New? And Harry let them. What's new? And I love Tom Hanks, and shame on him for being a part of that. Yeah, I don't That's, know why he you know, did that. Mike Myers would never do that. I know. David no, Beckham right. would never, never do that. Not in a million so, years. You know, shame so on him. So that happened, and then he gets he gets on on the stage, and the great. I think it was so so embarrassing embarrassing for him when he starts talking about. Well, I just 
want to be a part of history and I want history to be told the correct way and it's the truth. I mean, no, he wants the future generation. Yeah, to know the cor to know the correct history. I mean, <laughs> Harry, I hate to break this to you, but your book Spare is not going to be in the Smithsonian next to Trump's Kofay Fay tweets. It's just, yeah. that's not gonna happen. Yeah, you're not that important. No, it? it's, it's <laughs> like, seriously. It's gonna be spare and Kofay Fay. When it comes to um, the- That's what people wanna the see. The British crown and Harry and Meghan and the future, they're like a tiny yeah. little glint, speck. Like, a glint. like, you know how you see the earth in the entire solar system and we're like a little tiny yeah, speck of dust? That's what Harry and Meghan are. They're oh, they like are. That and they tiny, did it to themselves. And they did it to themselves. They overexposed themselves. Yes, so. this was so dumb, putting the Netflix thing oh, and out then and then the book. And then the queen has only been dead for four months mind you, during this Colbert thing. He's laughing it up. He's drinking tequila. Tequila, yeah. He's thinking this is funny. Let's be funny, guys. And then he talks, he goes, he goes, uh, he, it's like, he acts like Mick Jagger at one point. And he <laughs> looks up at the uh, the balcony and he goes, <laughs> people not go, up there. He go, yeah, there's no one up there. He goes, oh, uh, do we have any veterans in the audience? <laughs> like I mean, one person. Like, <laughs> and then one person claps. And then it's like, and then he tells a story about the 20, uh, killing the He's 25. He's like, look, look. I never said it. It was the British press. He did say it. Dude. He said it. Let's say the British press did take it out of context. Let's say they did. Because I did read the passage. Yeah. Let's say they did. Which they, they didn't. didn't. But let's say they did. You still wrote in a book that you killed 25, 25 people, people and you considered them as chess pieces. It was still the idea. Okay. Now, the <laughs> their video came out. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was like the I Ayatollah like, was Harry, talking. Prince Harry will pay for his crimes. Yeah, that was scary. Oh, my God. That was you scary. Guys better, like, I heard, an, I read an article that they're supposedly in Canada right now. Oh. They rented out a YouTube but wait, I for $14,000. Wait, I thought that, who did it? Harry and Meghan are supposedly in Canada right now. But I thought Canada was the most unsafe place to be well, with all is. the boats it and is, drones but right now montecito is underwater so they can't be there that was interesting that montecito flooded the day after the anderson cooper it's and like it princess diana and the queen were crying in heaven and flooded montecito, flooded montecito. and it, ironically it's quite nice in um london right now uh -huh. yeah yeah, you could have been doing some really could've nice things some with some great could've, charities yeah. and helping people. William and Kate did today. Yeah, what, they went to a hospital today. Yeah, That's what Liverpool. you could have been doing. Yeah. That's what you guys could have been doing. So but I don't the know interviews were a joke. Best part to me yeah, of Colbert. is when Colbert with a straight face asked him about the broken necklace. Oh, yeah. And asked him to show the necklace. Show neck the necklace. Which, can you show me the necklace? And he's like, yeah. Megan gave me uh, both necklaces of my kid's heartbeat, and he's showing it like like he's he was like. And he said, "I had it repaired so I can like wear he it. like he's like he's a like witnessed a murder or something." Yeah. That's what it's, and Colbert, instead of making fun of the fact that he's got three necklaces now around his neck, he just like goes, "Oh man, that must be so tough." So. Please understand when we say Colbert is a tool, Colbert is a tool. Is a tool. Oh, wait, I stopped funny. watching Late Night after Conan went off the air. That's, you know, I'm not going to watch I'm not going to watch Late Night anymore. No. Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien was the king, and that's it. And, Period. And he got, just stop talking yeah, about it. Yeah, because we can't there's even, no such thing as Late Night anymore no. in, my, in my book. And then Colbert had the nerve to bust out a picture of the queen. I know. I hated that. I hated that. Yeah. How God. dare he? How dare he bring up the queen? It was just too, it was too just, soon. It was God. too soon to talk about this stuff. Well, he showed him a picture of the Christmas card picture of him and the kids and Megan. He busted that out and he, and he's like, yeah, you know, I thought, now tell me if this isn't a, a racist comment. He said, yeah, I thought my wife's jeans were going to be the dominant jeans, but they got the Spencer jeans. He was referring to well, his he kids. Wanted to, yeah, he said she, they look a lot He says like they look like Diana. my mom. First of all, his kids look nothing. Now, I, this is my opinion. Yeah, I don't think they look. His, his kids look nothing like Princess Diana. Nothing. Um, Archie looks like Megan. Mm -hmm. 
Lily, from the only picture we have seen yeah, of her, the brother, the looks brother. like Thomas Markle Jr. Yeah, it looks like uh, Megan's half brother. I it really understand. Does. I understand that Harry wants to cling on to his mom and any side of the family he has. Like we can say, like if you saw a picture of our mom right now, you would be like, oh my god, they look just like their yeah, mom yeah. and our our mom's side of the family. We are very. Italian looking. I don't see any Spencer in those kids. No, I don't see it either. I'm just saying he he brings it up a lot. Of course he I does. It was why does Harry, if he's such a feminist, why does he call Camilla a villain and yeah. dangerous? Why does he make fun of that school yeah. matron? Yeah. Why does he do that? Megan calls Kate baby brain. Yeah, I don't like Aren't that. Aren't those the things she was talking about in yeah. archetypes? He gets the death of the queen mother wrong. <laughs> Now we can talk about his ghostwriter. His ghostwriter took complete advantage of him. That guy... I think so, man. I think the guy uh, wanted to did. sell books. Yeah, I he just, wants to sell books. I just think the guy's a really bad ghostwriter and fact checker because there is no way that this... This guy wrote The Tender Bar. I mean, oh, really? Yeah, he's oh, the guy wow. who wrote The Tender Bar. And he wrote this? Yeah. Harry's true... Again, saying his truth is sub subjective, not objective. Right, okay. Oh. You can't write about people, though. You can't write about William and your stepmom and your dad and be subjective no. because what you're doing is you're hurting them. I mean, you're you're and you're putting them in danger. Now, what I love about this is Tom Bauer is coming in hot. Oh, he came in hot, and he's giving us so much to work with because Tom Bauer's a lawyer. So and and he, unlike Harry and his ghostwriter, he fact checked everything yeah. in his book this is why over Tom, and over again. Well, this is why Tom Bauer, when he gets sued for libel, well, he's he not. wins. No, he's been sued. Oh no, he's been sued many times. He yes. wins every time. Yeah. So Harry and Megan are not, not even gonna go there. They're not gonna go there because he'll win. And he pretty much said Harry has been a drug addict for twenty five years. Yeah. And I do believe this because when you take mushrooms and we and smoke weed over a period of time. I'm not saying doing those things is a bad thing. I think everyone, if you want to try drugs at least once or twice or three times, go for it, experience it, get crazy. Um, should you do it over a long period of time? No. No, it will mess with your brain. Take care of yourself, guys. Now, it does sound like Harry is doing those things still. Right. To me. He um talks about Doria. Uh -huh. Now there has been a large gap on when Megan was a child living with Thomas and Doria not being there at all. And then she would be in and out. She'd be in and out. Because she'd be in and out of yeah. jail. I've always said Doria is a shady character and has a lot to do with why Harry is the way he is right now. Tom Bauer flat out said that she's a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. We said that in our last podcast. Well, no, I never said she was a drug dealer, Stephanie. I would have never said that because unless I had concrete proof. If Tom Bauer said it, that means we can call her a drug dealer. He flat out said in Revenge that she's a drug dealer. And he even said, it's legally safe to say this because it was in my book. Harry claimed in his book that when they were trying to get Thomas Markle from Mexico to London mm -hmm. for the wedding... Harry claimed that he booked an Air New Zealand flight, first class, paid for on Megan's credit card. Right. The airline comes out right away and says, whoa, yeah. hold up, dude. We don't have any flights from Mexico to London. Yeah, they have business class. don't even have a class. First, first class Plus. cabin. So they're just that's making not, these things up to make themselves yeah. look good. That's not subjective. That's, that's not, not subjective. subjective. Harry claimed that he would shop at, now in America, we call it TJ Maxx, but in, I guess, over the pond, it's called TK Maxx. Okay. He would claim that he would go to their annual sale and buy things from like Gap and Express that yeah. were ill, you it's know, like, like the, from the factory. Yeah. Yeah. That is ill-fitted and, and yeah, you know, like a Ross. Oh, yeah. yeah, so he would go to their annual sale and save money because he didn't get a clothing allowance. He didn't get those things. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you see how this guy lived? He lived at the polo club. Yeah. Oh, my I'm God, so... dude. Here's the I'm thing so about... over that. Here's the thing about royalty. You, Even though Harry's being a schmuck right now, he's royalty. He can get into any and he, and place he, yeah. he wants. If he wants to go to a restaurant, if he wants to go to Mastro's one night, he's going to be able to yeah. get in without a reservation. So Prince Harry... Enough with the tears on that. So he said they have an annual sale, and that's when he would shop. That was the only time yeah, he would shop. Sure. TK Maxx came out and said, we really like that you, you know, like shopping with us, but 
we've never had an annual sale right, ever. Right, right. There's just the line. It's like so funny how these people are like throwing him under the bus. It's gonna be interesting to to see other YouTube channels well, do like the fact checking. Part. I think the I think the thing that bothered me the most because again we're sisters and things are private was the sharing the text exchange between Kate and Megan for the bridesmaids dresses. Oh yeah, that was awful. Why would he do that? That is like unheard of. In family, yeah, that's in stuff. That stuff you do on Real Housewives of Orange County. You don't do it with the royals. Well, no, you don't do it in family. Take away the fact that he's royal. Yeah. Which any okay? Would anybody out there do that to no. their family? Would they share private text messages? No, <laughs> that's insane. So that really bothered me. And the whole Givenchy thing. This is what's strange. I can't remember the name of the woman who designed the dress and the bridesmaid dresses, but she worked at, she works at Givenchy. Mm -hmm. And they made the bridesmaid dresses from the measurements that were sent. Oh, okay. And then they sent the bridesmaid dresses and then they had a tailor. Right. And, and this guy came out and said, I was the only one doing the fitting. It makes you wonder what Megan did to burn bridges over at Givenchy for them not to send the actual designer over or her people to be the one to personally do the fittings. Yeah. They had to hire a separate tailor yeah, who's she, based she, in London. Because she's rude, abrasive, and I don't difficult. know what happened, but that was very strange. Megan always said that her dress was hot couture. Yeah. God, they did not look. Like I remember, I, mean, I, I remember the morning I loved watching it, it with you. I loved no, it. I, re I I liked it. I thought she was um, copying that other princess. But I didn't care. I thought she looked pretty. But I she looked natural. I and definitely, I definitely liked, it. liked it. But I remember thinking to myself that morning. I thought, well, is it because I'm drinking too much champagne, or is it me, or does the bridesmaid dresses and her dress not fit right? Didn't you yeah. have like a little notion in it the did, back of your head? I, I did. It, it did not fit. Properly. Right, properly. Yes. So something was going on. Something was definitely we knew going Charlotte on. Was, uh, poor little Charlotte, you yeah. know, had, had issues. And poor Kate Middleton had issues. And, and Kate is... Well, she, you've got to understand, Kate had just had a baby 25 days ago. Yeah, man. It's like, geez. 25 days. You're lucky she showed up yeah. to the wedding. Because that's hard. That's her third child. She's postpartum. And then he got mad because William didn't go out with him the night before. There are three babies at home. At home. They... And he was like, well, I did it for William. Well, you were a bachelor back then, dude. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's different. It's blaming It's always his brother. blaming. Always blaming his brother. There was a love story in that book. About what? He described his time with Chelsea Davey. Ooh, that's... It wasn't like she didn't know who he was, but she truly didn't care who he was. Yeah. And she was just a... I mean, she wasn't a down-to-earth girl in the sense that she was, like, a normal girl. I mean, yeah, the girl but how, was did they, rich how did they, how did they meet? He called her up and he said, hey, do you remember meeting me from this polo club? I want to hang out. And she was like, oh, can I bring my friend? Because she didn't really, she wasn't going to go alone. And and they hung out all night. And then the next day he came and saw her. And he said she was like anybody I'd ever met. Oh, and it that's really nice. did sound like the relationship he wanted with yeah, Megan. Yeah, yeah. Like, Megan was love bombing him. Yeah. Megan's saying she didn't know who Andrew was, yeah. who Prince Andrew was. That's... Megan's saying she had never heard of the royal family. Kate she didn't know how to That was all BS. I believe Chelsea Davy really was unaffected by the royal family because she was living in South Africa. She was just from a different part of the world. It's interesting that he did put her in the book. He did I put guess her in the book. She, she was a big part of his life. And she was, every, even us Americans thought that yeah. they were going to get married. You know, and I didn't like how he kept mentioning how in Toronto, Megan was almost run off the road yeah, by paparazzi. Okay, that's fine. If you want to make those those accusations, fine. Where are the pictures? There's no pictures. There's no pictures. Don't you think if Megan was in a car almost being run off the road by paparazzi, she would be snapping away She'd or recording video, it or yeah. calling the police? She's just, they're God, all just so like full. Such the lies! lies. Don't you love the thing? I'll show. I'll send it to you on Twitter of Megan w describing her wedding dress, and she goes, "Do you see that little blue? blue?" Somewhere in here, there's a piece of. Did you see it? The piece of blue fabric that's stitched inside. No. It was my something blue. It's my. It's oh, fabric how much from my. I hope it's still in there. Yes, we'll have to look at that. It's fabric from the dress that I wore on our first date. And then it cuts to his him ex in the book talking about what she wore. <laughs> she was wearing a black sweater, jeans, heels. I knew nothing about clothes, but I knew she was chic. <laughs> but 
but she they but also she said she wore she, she wore a blue dress. And then her own Instagram page and Corey Vitello's Instagram page keeps tripping them up know, because man. he's got pictures of them living together with him and the dogs yeah. she's got pictures of of her eating at his restaurant and all this stuff yeah. during the time yeah. that her and harry are, oh my god it's, it's just like, the lies. lies how do sussex squad at this point make sense of there a lot of, of them are just giving up a lot they are giving up. up a lot yeah. are just giving, giving up. up yeah which is funny but it is uh, funny i think what we need to just kind of wrap this up is harry is very disturbed right now this is a very disturbed person because of one of the excerpts from the book if you haven't heard it i'm not going to play it because it's so gross but it oh. has to do with his frozen todger i'm not going to say the word todger what's a todger you know what a todger is it's a pee pee yes okay elizabeth arden cream oh and his mom diana and his mom that, what that I, is not a I normal thing to say. No. That's not a normal thing to say. That's not a funny thing to say. Huffing gas in the hospital and then Megan leaving after only two hours of giving birth. It's considered a high-risk pregnancy. It's a geriatric pregnancy. So for them to let her go after two hours doesn't make any sense. But I think the most important thing right now is there's a very troubled man being yeah. completely taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. What I see, and again, this is my opinion, what I see happening is this has been a huge setup. Because if she leaves him now and divorces him, keeps the kids, get all the money, and then she can write her own book. Yeah, well, she, she can, is writing her own book. She can basically say that he was crazy. Mm -hmm. Because right now the whole world he thinks was on he's, drugs. Right now the entire world thinks that Harry is a crazy drug addict. Yeah. That so is the consensus. She'll she'll take that narrative and go with it. So I personally think that that's where this is headed. Yeah. I feel really I bad. really do. And I can see why William was so desperate at Prince Philip's funeral, where he said, on mommy's grave. I'm telling you the truth. I really want you to be happy. I really believe William was telling the truth. And for Harry to say he, he swore on my mother's grave, but I knew he was lying. So no, I don't, Harry. I don't. He was telling the truth. He is worried about you. He does not recognize you, you his need, brother. You need help and you need to get away from certain people. And I hope you do. And I hope you go back to the UK and... and just you, though. Yeah. Just you and and, and get this straight with your brother. So... Well, I hope he gets help. Help, yeah. Yeah. Today's dog rescue. Da, 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 da. We thought, oh, here's Luna again. We thought we would do a dog rescue in the UK for our UK friends. It's called Soul Mutt's Dog Rescue. And here's a picture of Nancy. The dog's name is after me. Oh, it's your name. Nancy and her brother Rupert were brought into the shelter and they were deeply matted and a mess and they took them in and made them so pretty and now they're up for adoption so if anyone's in the uk right now and you want a cute you want a cute pair of dogs they're brother and sister and they're bonded mm -hmm. so and they might already be gone but um please get a hold of soul mutt's dog rescue oh and um if not let's give them a little love and a little uh donate Oh, what do you hear? Mailman. Oh, the mailman. <laughs> they are heroes, just like all the other yeah, little so dog rescues. For... We will be back very soon to do our episode on cults and why we think Better Up is very similar to the Nexium cult. Yeah. The so, multi-level marketing. And thanks, we'll explain guys. all that. So thanks. And if you have, and I love your comments. Um, I try to get back to everybody. But um, keep writing them because I do like talking to you and um, it's a lot of fun. I feel like I'm making a lot of new friends, Stephanie too. And go out and adopt a dog. Bye everybody.